Welcome Northeast Conference fans to our latest NEC Now podcast on the NEC Overtime Pod. Today, I am joined by members of the Long Island University football team to discuss the cultural and personal importance of Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you all so much for being here. I really do appreciate you taking the time. So can you go around the room and just kind of introduce yourself, name and class year, and say a bit about what Hispanic Heritage Month means to you and why it was important for you to get on this podcast? Uh, hi guys, my name is Jerome Brooks. Um, or this is my redshirt senior year. And um, Hispanic Heritage Month does mean a lot to me because my grandfather, he's Puerto Rican, uh, so am I. And he came from Puerto Rico here, so I grew up, grew up around him a lot, like especially my early years. So, I mean, that's why it really means a lot to me. Hi, I'm Jose Acosta. I'm a redshirt sophomore. And... Uh, Hispanic heritage like means a lot to me because everyone in my family is Hispanic, and then like just to uh, have a month like honor like our cultures and stuff like that is uh, pretty cool. I'm Puerto Rican, so most of my fa- or all my family comes from Puerto Rico, and we just love like the attributes and the like the culture that we give on. Like the food is great, the music is awesome. I don't know if you guys been to a Spanish party, but awesome. Um, the language is beautiful, you know what I'm trying So, like, I, I just feel like this means a lot because, like, you know, it's just it just defines everything that we are, you know, and we can't let that get away. Hey, guys, my name is Matthew Molina. Uh, I'm a transfer junior here at LIU. I play on the football team. And uh, Hispanic heritage means a lot to me because my whole family is Mexican-American. And so um, a lot of the traditions, a lot of the culture, the language is big in the family. So glad to be here. My name is Matthew Nieves. I'm a freshman here at LIU. Uh, I say Hispanic Heritage Month is important to me because my whole family is Spanish. We're all Puerto Ricans. And to have a whole month to ourselves, I think is very special to have. I'm Owen Glasgow. Uh, I'm a redshirt sophomore here at LIU. I play uh, football. Hispanic. Heritage Month is important because, you know, my family's from Argentina. My mom, she raised me by herself, you know, strong woman. To come from a place like that uh, means a lot. My uncles, aunts, they all live, they all still live there. Uh, it just uh, means a lot. My name is Steven Omada. Um, uh, I'm a senior here at LAU, and Hispanic Heritage Month means a lot to me because, like I said, like everybody else, I'm I'm full Hispanic. It's an honor to celebrate our culture for this month. My name is Ricarte Silver, uh, better known as Rudy, and uh, Hispanic Heritage Month is important to me because my whole life, uh, my family has basically emphasized uh, to take pride in who we are as uh, Panamanians. And my name, basically, you know, just taking pride in who, who I am as a as a Hispanic person. Great, thank you guys so much. It's so nice to meet all of you. And I'm again, so happy you're all here and taking the time. I'd love to hear a little bit about how your heritage has influenced you in your sport, especially growing up. And if it continues to influence you, you know, in football to this day. I think the way my culture supports me in like football, because you don't really see a lot of Hispanics playing, you know, football these days. And, like, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing growing up for me. Like, I was always growing up to play soccer and baseball. Those are, like, the two main sports that I was put on. But, you know, I grew up, I was obviously bigger size. So, football puts me, a, like, inspires me to be better at football because it's out of the norm for my culture. And I just want to show up because, like, put it more out that Hispanics can play these sports. And, like, normally not. Similar to what Steve said, like, my grandfather, he came from Puerto Rico, but he was like the biggest American football fan. Like he loved it to death, even though like he didn't grow up around it. So when he did come here, he wound up coaching it. And I wound up being like my first coach for like when I started in Italy. So then like, he really did influence me, even though like he's supposed to play soccer because he's Spanish, but he absolutely loved American football. So like piggyback off what Jerome and Steve said, like growing up, like since I'm Dominican, you know, typical stereotype, you know, Dominicans play baseball. So growing up, I played baseball, like, until like high school and then I switched over to football. It was kind of like, uh, like, what are you doing? Like stick to baseball, but it was like, I love the sport. So I kept on playing. One big thing is just like the support group. You know what I'm trying to say? Like a lot of Spanish people have like usually big families, you know? And like when 
we do play a sport and they go out like they're not coming with like one two people that helped me a lot when like when I was on the field you know going through like the adversities and you know like just having those people there like just supporting you and like you on a hundred percent on what you do like I feel like that that's like a great feeling you know what I'm saying so yeah Throughout Hispanic Heritage Month, we're encouraging our followers to engage with Hispanic culture by consuming media made by Hispanic creators. So we'll go back around the room and hear each of your favorite Hispanic films or shows, as well as your favorite musicians, because I've heard that's, you know, a really kind of big thing. Okay, so I really haven't watched like a lot of Spanish films, but like, I guess it you could say like my favorite Spanish artists. I mean, they're, they're much newer. I like like Bad Bunny and Annual A and stuff like that, but I, don't, I haven't really watched a lot of Spanish films. I have to start doing that, but I really haven't. Artist wise, like, yeah, I had to take that off drum, like Bad Bunny, like Annual, uh, Ozuna stuff too. But like when it comes to the films, I really haven't watched any like Hispanic films. Like I know like my mom and stuff, like she watched soap operas and novellas every night. So she be getting into those. and. I guess they would pipe fire, I guess, sometimes. I'm also in the same boat when it comes to the films. I'm not too familiar, but my favorite uh, artist is uh, definitely uh, Hector Lavo. Uh, like, uh, since I've been young, I just always would hear it. And it just, I just, something that I just love, just fell in love with. So, yeah. The artists I like, I like, uh, I like Prince Voice. I like Emmanuel. I like, um, Aventura, those are all like good artists, like, you know, music that you could dance to, relate to and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, those are pretty much it. Uh, as far as movies go, Hispanic movies, my favorite is uh, The Golden Dream. It takes you through like uh, the journey of some kids who try and cross the border, uh, shows the struggles and what they go through. And I really like that film, definitely must watch. And uh, as far as artists go, I definitely like Lune and uh, Annual A pretty good when it comes to artists i say when i listen to music from my grandparents it would be like hector lavo and mark anthony they they play that all the time so those would be like the actual spanish music that i like but like in american culture spanish music it'll be like kevin gates i don't know if y'all listen to him but he's half puerto rican so i listen to him a lot but uh movies I don't really watch none, but uh, I say a good one. I think it's called West Side Story. It's when the two Spanish games go against each other. But I, I don't know if that's the actual title, but that's the movie I watch. Yeah, West Side Story was uh, the movie I was going to say as well. Um, but for artists, I would say, like, I don't know, when mom grew up or when I was growing up, she listened to, like, Shakira more that that way. Uh, so, you know, I'm a big Shakira guy. Also, Enrique Iglesias and uh, I'd say Ricky Martin. Yeah, for Hispanic movies, I'll have to go with Blood In, Blood Out. That was that was a tough Hispanic movie. And then artists, I had to go with like Bad Bunny and like Mark Anthony mostly. So having you know what is it eight players on at the same time is like really incredible. So why did you guys? kind of want to come together and do this together and speak about it as a group and show that kind of display of unity during Hispanic Heritage Month. I feel, I feel like it shows like that we care as like, not as just like a football team, but as like, you know, Spanish people coming together. Like, you know, like that's something that we do with well, me and my family and like a lot of people I know, like we come together, like we have no problem, like, you know, coming together, supporting each other. That was another thing I, I was saying before about like supporting, you know, and like, I'm doing this because, like, me personally, like, I find it so awesome that we get to, like, represent LIU, you know, especially, like, for this month, you know, especially that everything going on with, you know, and on the news and, you know, like, we get to bring notice to, like, us and, like, what we could do for the school, what we could do for the community, and what we could just do in general and just to help people out and stuff like that, you know, and, like, I, I, I think this is, like, a really cool idea that we all are on this, like, and it's bringing this all together. Yeah, it's really great actually to have you all here. It's really, really cool. Thank you. I think it's pretty cool that like, we can all come together, share our experiences, uh, you know, kind of being underrepresented in football. I think it's cool to hear other people's stories, you know, throughout their whole journey. 
if you could highlight one thing about your cultural heritage to our listeners, like what would that be? And you're welcome to repeat yourself from something you said earlier. But again, we'll start with Jerome. Mm, one thing, uh, definitely the food. I think is is like the biggest thing with with my like with especially like with my family. Like when I was a kid, like every Sunday, like the whole family would get together and like everybody would be cooking outside. You know, just like music blast and like just everybody having a good time. So I think especially like my culture, I think I think it's definitely the food and the music. Do you have a favorite dish? Mm, that's hard. But no, I can't think I can't think of favorites. So it's really all of it. Whenever it's someone's really, says favorite is the food, I have to ask them. I'm always curious. No, yeah, I can't I, I just can't think of favorite. Just like the whole family aspect of like our culture and like always supporting each other with everything we do. And then on top of that, the food is definitely fire. I'm not going to lie. Like every Saturday, we invite the family over from the city and we grill outside. And my mom like, makes rice and stuff. So it's a cool thing. For me, it's more like the family gatherings, you know, like when me and my family like are all together because I'm one of 15 kids. So like we have like a very big family. Like when we go out, it's like party or like for a barbecue or a graduation or whatever, whatever it is, like we're all together like we're all like literally like since we all grew up together like presence of everybody like the the mindset like everybody's everybody's there so like we always have a good time you know sometimes it could be fighting sometimes it could be love sometimes it could be like you know but at the end of the day you know like we all we all know that like we're a family and like the the music is awesome you know like my favorite dish is uh arroz con pollo with apichuela and um i like penning that's fire. I don't know if y'all have that name, but best thing in the world. But yeah, I just, I just, I just like more of like the family aspect of it, like everybody coming together and stuff. Yeah, and with that, do you have a favorite like holiday or tradition that you all celebrate together? Well, we we go crazy on Puerto Rican Day. Like that's our day. Like Puerto Rican Day is like when we show out. We we dress our cars. We dress ourselves. We dress our babies, our carriages, everything. You know. But like like I said, like. When we're all together, like it's just like like we we belong on like a TV show type type of thing, but yeah. Uh, for me, it's definitely the family aspect. Uh, there's always somebody at my house, always somebody barbecuing. So, um, and piggyback on the other guys, definitely the food. Um, something called tri-tip, certain meat, uh, Mexican meat. Most people don't know what it is on the East Coast. Big on the West Coast in California, and. Uh, as far as dishes go, I'll probably say a bondiga soup, pretty good, definitely fire. Uh, for me, it's got to be the music, the parties, and the food. I went, I ate a lot of different food from different countries, and I feel like we still got the best food. We got the best seasoning. I feel like we just, we just there. We're on top. But I say my best dish is panin and uh, empanadillas. I think my mama made the best empanadillas. Anybody want to have a cookout, y'all can go ahead. Go to my mama. I feel like she got the best cookout. But uh, no, nah, it's um. I feel like we still have the best culture. Like no matter what, just the parties, the the atmosphere. When it is Puerto Rican Day, there's a. Uh, I live. I'm from Florida, and there's a city called Ybor City, and they'll shut the whole the whole city down and just have a whole party, just playing music, loud food everywhere. It's it's just a good tradition. Well, for me, it's probably the family aspect of things too. Um, because like when I I don't really get to see them too often, probably once a year. You know, I go down there during a like Christmas time stuff like that, and like everyone's there. Like I go to the airport, I show up. Like me, and my friend, my brothers, my mom, and it's like the airport is just packed with our family only. That's how it feels. You know, it's exciting to get there. You know, you see I see people I haven't seen in years. Uh, you got to see the the cookouts that they have, you know, for just just for my family down there. It's ridiculous. And, like, uh, the holiday aspect of it is also very, very fun. Awesome. I hope you get to see them this year, you know, with everything going on. Yeah. Hard not being able to travel and kind of see everyone. So fingers crossed for you, for sure. Yeah, just to piggyback on everybody said, like, the whole family aspect is really dope. And the food is amazing. Like, we always have, when I like back at home, we always have Sunday family dinners and we always have a barbecue. Always, my grandpa's always on the grill with us some steak, chicken. It's always good. And like my favorite dish, 
Because I'm half Mexican, half Argentinian. So Argentinian side, I just love meat. They always make carne asada, like just steak. So I love that. Then on my, my mom's side, Mexican side, like, I don't know if you guys heard, it's called menudo. It is fire. Menudo's fire. It's my favorite dish. Uh, just like everybody said, it's definitely, uh, for me, it's just the love and the support system. I just feel like there's nothing like like them. Like, I Honestly, I have one side of my family that's from uh, from Jamaica and then one side that's from Panama. And I just always feel the love that they carry is just always heavier. You know, I'm not saying anything, you know, about my other side, but it's just something that it's just something that I feel like they naturally have to them where it's just they just they just love harder. Um, my favorite uh, food is definitely my grandmother's uh, arroz con pollo. I like uh, patacón as well. And yeah. But I do really appreciate you all hopping on. It was really great. Thank you so, so much. It was great to hear each of your perspectives and I'm super excited to see the finished product of this. Um, but yeah, thank you all. Hispanic Heritage Month will run until October 15th, so stay tuned as NEC athletes and administrators continue to share their personal stories in the coming days. That was LIU Football and this has been NEC Now.